Not long ago, Huawei's story looked like a cautionary tale, crippled by US sanctions, cut off from Google, and exiled from the global tech elite. The company's market share collapsed, its access to advanced chips vanished, and many expected a slow fade into irrelevance. But instead of folding, Huawei turned inward, pouring billions into R&D and building a domestic supply chain from scratch. The sanctions became a catalyst, forcing Huawei to reinvent itself and pursue technological sovereignty. Behind the scenes, engineers reverse-engineered processes, designed new chips and built an entirely new operating system. Supported by Beijing, Huawei's struggle became a symbol of China's ambition for self-reliance. Ironically, US pressure forged a more resilient, independent Huawei, one that no longer played by Silicon Valley's rules. Today, November 11, 2025, Huawei is not just back, it's a geopolitical force. The company's resurgence marks a profound shift, proving innovation can thrive outside the Western ecosystem. The sanctions meant to contain Huawei instead accelerated China's rise as a new epicenter of tech innovation. The Phoenix has not only risen, it's flying on its own wings. Huawei's journey is now a blueprint for technological independence. The world is watching a new era unfold. The launch of the Huawei Mate 70 Air wasn't just a product release, it was a national event. Pre-orders soared past 2 million in a day, fueled by patriotic buying and a sense of collective pride. For many, owning the Mate 70 Air is a statement, support for a national champion that defied global pressure. Lines formed outside stores as deliveries began, the phone becoming a symbol of resilience and a new era in Chinese tech. Analysts predict over 10 million units sold before the next model arrives, giving Huawei a massive, loyal home market. The phone remains exclusive to China for now, allowing Huawei to consolidate strength before a global push. Without Google services, Western appeal is limited, but Huawei is building its own Harmony OS ecosystem to challenge the Google-Apple duopoly. The Mate 70 Air's success sends a clear message, sanctions haven't stopped China, they've fueled a tech movement, the US no longer holds all the cards, a new competitor has arrived. The tech war has entered a new phase. The Mate 70 Air is a feat of engineering, just 6.6 mm thin, with a polished titanium frame and Cunlin glass for durability. It's both beautiful and rugged, boasting IP68 and IP69 ratings for water and dust resistance. Inside, a 6,500 mm silicon carbon battery delivers all-day power without bulk, thanks to new battery chemistry. Fast 66W wired charging is included, but wireless charging is omitted to keep the phone ultra-slim. The 7-inch OLED display is stunning edge-to-edge, -edge, 27 of 61 through 20 resolution, 120 Hz refresh, and a blinding 4000 nits peak brightness. The camera system features a 50 MP main sensor with OIS, but the real leap is in software, Harmony OS 5.1, built independently from Android. Harmony OS is fast, fluid, and packed with AI features like one-click document summaries and intuitive gesture controls. Satellite messaging via China's Beidou network ensures connectivity even off the grid. Every detail, from battery to display, signals a new standard for mobile devices. The Mate 70 Air isn't just a phone, it's a showcase of China's engineering ambition. Huawei is redefining what a flagship device can be. The world is taking notice. The future is here, and it's made in China. At the heart of the Mate 70 Air is the Kirin 9020 processor, a symbol of China's technological independence. U.S. sanctions aim to end Huawei's chip ambitions, but the Kirin 9020, built entirely in China by SMIC, proves otherwise. Produced on a 7 mm process, it's not the world's most advanced, but it's powerful enough for flagship performance. The chip closes a critical technology gap, showing China can now produce high-performance silicon without Western help. The Mate 70 Air runs smoothly, handling demanding apps and games with ease. The Kirin 9020 is more than a processor, it's a declaration that China's tech industry can stand alone. Huawei's vertical integration, from design to manufacturing, makes it resilient to future sanctions. For China, it's a leap towards self-sufficiency. For the world, it signals a new era of fractured supply chains. The global semiconductor industry is splitting, with China building a parallel ecosystem immune to US influence. The Kirin chip is a tectonic shift in global power. The rules of the game have changed, the West must now adapt to a new reality. The premium smartphone market has long been dominated by Apple and Samsung. With the Mate 70 Air, Huawei is back, this time with a disruptive strategy.
the base model starts at just $580 in China, undercutting Apple's iPhone by hundreds of dollars. Despite the lower price, Andi Mate 7D, Andi Tyson and Air offers flagship features, a massive battery, ultra-bright 7-inch display, and a sleek, thin design. While Apple's A-series chips are technically ahead, the Kirin 9020 is more than capable for real-world use. Huawei is competing on both price and innovation, challenging Apple's high-margin model. The biggest hurdle remains software. Apple's ecosystem is unmatched outside China, while Harmony OS is still growing. In China, where Google is blocked, this isn't an issue. Huawei could overtake Apple in the premium segment. Globally, Apple's app ecosystem is a formidable defense, but Huawei is patient, building its own alternatives. The global tech market is fracturing, with each side strengthening its own ecosystem. Huawei's hardware is now world-class, the software race is on, the competitive landscape is shifting, the next chapter is just beginning. The Mate 70 Air is just one front in China's tech offensive. In AI, Huawei's Ascend 910C chip now rivals NVIDIA's best, ensuring China's AI progress isn't throttled by US export controls. SMIC-made chips now power data centers and AI research, fueling advances from autonomous driving to healthcare. The US tried to block China from EUV lithography machines, but Chinese scientists are making breakthroughs in developing their own. If China succeeds, it could break ASML's monopoly and reach the cutting edge of chip manufacturing. This would complete China's journey to tech independence. Every sanction has become a new target for domestic innovation. China's state-driven approach is turning obstacles into opportunities. The global tech race is now a competition between equals. The world's technological balance is shifting fast. Huawei's rise is accelerating the great tech decoupling, splitting the world into two rival tech ecosystems. The old globalized model is fading, replaced by Western and Chinese blocks with their own standards, platforms and supply chains. In one sphere, iPhones, Android, Google, and Microsoft. In the other, Harmony OS, Tencent, Alibaba, and Chinese cloud services. This fragmentation extends to AI, cloud computing, and even internet standards. Countries and companies are being forced to choose sides, aligning with either the US or China. China is onshoring production, while the West invests billions to bring manufacturing home. The result, higher costs, less collaboration, but greater resilience. Intense competition is driving investment in AI, quantum computing, and biotech. The world is moving from a single tech economy to a bipolar rivalry. Each side is racing for supremacy. The stakes have never been higher. Huawei's resurgence forces the US and its allies to rethink their strategy. Sanctions didn't stop China, they motivated it to achieve tech independence. The Mate 70 Air is proof. China is now a formidable, self-reliant competitor. The US can no longer dictate China's tech trajectory. China's dominance in rare earths gives it new leverage, exposing Western vulnerabilities. The West must pivot from containment to outcompeting, investing in R&D, education, and alliances. The goal win through innovation, not blockades. The story of the Mate 70 Air is a harbinger of a multipolar tech world. The era of uncontested American supremacy is over. The real competition is just beginning.